Back in 2008, a company called Axiotron released the ModBook, but this wasn't the only Mac tablet around. In fact, years earlier, Assistive Technology Incorporated released the Gemini Book, a touchscreen iBook Macintosh. <laughs> Hey guys, how are you all doing? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Crazy Ken, and this is the Gemini Augmentative and Alternate Communications Device, or the Gemini Book, as we like to call it. This awesome unit was loaned to me by Greg Rutke from Rutke Mods. No, I didn't steal it or anything, he loaned it to me. And uh, that's really cool because this thing, like you don't really see these out in the wild. The company that made these is defunct. And this particular unit was probably made around 2001, 2002. It's kind of hard to pinpoint a date. So today I thought it would be cool to take a look at the hardware, take a look at the insides to see how the mod actually works. And then of course, test drive the software. So the base of this mod is an Apple iBook G3 computer. It uses a PowerPC G3 466 megahertz processor. And this touchscreen was built by Assistive Technologies. It's their own touch digitizer. Unfortunately, with this particular unit, the touchscreen does not work. However, we can still interact with the computer via USB. We can plug in keyboards, mice, switch controllers. There's a lot of ways you can interact with this thing, which makes sense because it is a device to help people with disabilities live more independent lives. It is an assistive device. And speaking of those ports, yes, it is kind of unusual that the ports are on the top. We're so used to seeing them on the sides, but there are still some ports available on the side. What really intrigues me is there's a USB port that has a label over it that says do not remove. And that's essentially because that USB port is now being used up here. So the wiring is all different and they don't want you plugging stuff in there. Another interesting port is this wheelchair joystick port, which kind of has these little screws on the side. It kind of looks like those uh, mini VGA, not mini VGA, full size VGA, just smaller. It actually looks like something that NanoRaptor would make. It kind of looks like a VGA port with the screws on the side, just really small. And you can plug in this device to your wheelchair so you can use the joystick on your wheelchair to actually interact with the operating system. Now, as you can see, the speakers are not in the typical place you'd see on an iBook G3. So I'm guessing this top part was custom made. They have the logo silk screen on there as well. And the speakers, these particular ones are a little blown out, but Generally speaking, I think they're louder than what you'd get in a typical iBook. So there's probably some amp or some other modification on the inside that makes them louder. And perhaps that was just to help people who were hard of hearing to be able to hear better. Way better than the speakers in the WoW computer that I looked at earlier. And another unique feature about this thing is the stand that comes with it. These are probably harder to find than the Gemini books themselves. And it's really cool because you can adjust the angle of it and just put it on your desk, prop it up kind of like what you can do with an iPad nowadays. But more importantly, I would say, is this cutout on the back. This works with certain mounts that can attach to wheelchairs. So you can be in a wheelchair and have this mounted right in front of you so it always moves with you. And also, Greg still has the manual for this thing, which is really awesome because there's not a ton of information about these guys on the interwebs. So that's a quick look at the hardware. Now let's bust this baby open and see what's on the inside. There's four screws that hold on the stand and then inside the battery compartment, there's two more. So we'll take this off. It's like a cooking show. You know, we did the work ahead of time to make it go more smoothly. And warranty void if seal is broken. Don't think we have to worry about that right now. I wanna show you this, this is kind of interesting. The label here, it has a custom label printed over the top here with the assistive technology logo and Gemini and all that, but Greg pointed out to me that if you turn it around, you can actually see the original Apple sticker is still, or the original Apple printing is still on there. You can see designed by Apple in California right there, assembled in Taiwan, so pretty cool. Anyway, we'll put that off to the side. Now all you do is you flip it over and now it opens up like a traditional Apple iBook. So just be careful at this point because there's a lot of wires on the inside. We have the airport card here, optical drive, hard drive. And if we take a look here, this is the component that controls the touch screen for the touch input. And here is the inverter for the backlight. And up here is the board where all the ports and the USB hub are. And yeah, this was $7,500, I mean, hey, it's kind of a MacGyver job. They had to take an existing product and make it work for themselves, but it works. I'm actually pretty impressed at the job they did. So that's the hardware of this really cool Gemini book mod. You know what's next now, right? The software. Okay, let's go ahead and boot it up with the relocated power button. And here we go. 
And there we go, it's loading up Mac OS 9.1. So the system is automatically loading up Speaking Dynamically Pro, which is one of the programs we're going to look at. I will hide it for now. I will hide it for now. Okay, network time error. <laughs> so like I was hinting at earlier, there's a lot of special software on here. There's also a lot of settings. So if we go to the control panel, you can see we have Gemini display, headphones, switches, and touchscreen. So if we go to touchscreen, this is where you can recalibrate the touchscreen if something were to go wrong. And I can't, why can't I drag any of these windows? I don't know why that's happening. Now, in theory, I could press the calibrate button to calibrate the touchscreen, but because the touchscreen doesn't work, I don't think that's a good idea. Gemini switches, so for example, if you did use that port we were talking about earlier, that joystick wheelchair port, this is where you can have those settings. You can use the joystick on your wheelchair to control the system, and you could adjust the settings in the Gemini switches panel. So one of the special applications on the Gemini book is the Gemini keyboard, which is... There you go, it's talking to me. This is a on-screen keyboard with some tweaks and some special features, and it does also speak to you when you press the letters. And if you want, we can pretend the touchscreen works with a little bit of movie magic. Oh, I'm gonna go press the R. R. See, it works great. You also have the special button. Special. <laughs> I don't know what any of these symbols mean. I know I read about it, but hang on. Okay, so this part kind of caught me off guard a little bit. Again, I have not test driven this much in case I haven't made that clear yet. But there's different controls for like dwell and scanning. And there's some parts I was able to figure out like for the volume. It looks like you can put in custom shortcuts in here. Zero, which meets the volume, or you can turn it up to seven. Volume seven. These go to 11. So one of the more important bundled applications with the Gemini book is Speaking Dynamically Pro. And this application allows you to communicate. You can use the computer's voice and make sentences either by typing or by using these buttons. And you can customize all of this stuff. There is an application on here called Board Maker, which looks like it lets you build your own boards. But I also noticed inside of this application, you can go to the design menu, press design, and now you get all of these customization controls where you can change the arrangement, colors, what button says what. There's even a lot of other menus in here like for dictionaries and pronunciation. Oh, you can scroll. There's even more in here. Holy sh... So we'll exit out of the design mode, go back to use, and we'll start with some typing. And you'll even see we have predictive text here, kind of like what you can get on your iPhone. So that's one way you can do it. You can also type in a sentence and have it read Hello, the whole thing. My name is Macintosh. It sure is great to get out of that bag. So one thing I noticed is you don't actually click the buttons. Instinctively, I wanted to click the buttons to input stuff, but you actually hover over these buttons to input stuff. I'm not sure exactly why that happens. I don't know if it's just because it's one less thing to do. And in terms of accessibility, if you can remove steps like clicking, that's good. Maybe it makes it easier for the switch controls to work too. But if anybody has an idea as to why you hover instead of click, uh, just let me know. So let's try asking a question. And then you can go to things, and this is actually a button that gives you a sub menu. So now you can choose dog. And right there, dog. where is my dog? There we go. Oh, there's a second page. What? Oh, there's like date inputs and stuff. Oh, you can even say things like, how are you? How are you? And it looks like it has date formats as well. So it's January 4th. January 04 FRIDAY 01190420008. So I guess whoever customized this button didn't put a space after the four and Friday. With anything that has a computer voice, I maybe want to make it swear. And I haven't done that yet. So let's try it. You son of a beach ball. There we go. Family friendly. There's one more thing I wanted to say, paying homage to all of my Newton friends. Eat up. Martha. <laughs> Remind me to beat up Martin. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, I got, I'm gonna cut here. <laughs> <laughs> So there we are guys, the Gemini AAC, or the Gemini iBook, or Gemini Book, as we like to say. Assistive technology isn't in business anymore, but it looks like they tried and succeeded at making some cool things for the time. So, once again, thank you very much, Greg Rutke from Rutke Mods, for loaning me this awesome system to tinker with. And if you guys want to see more tech episodes coming out all the time, feel free to subscribe. I love doing episodes about rare and retro tech, new tech, and of course, scam tech. And hey, if you like this episode, you know what to do. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.
Catch the crazy and pass it on.